The Russian S-400 Triumph air defense missile system has emerged as one of the most discussed weapons of the modern era, not only because of its technical specifications but also due to its political and strategic implications. Moscow presents the S-400 as a highly advanced, self-contained shield capable of confronting a wide spectrum of aerial threats. While Western analysts remain cautious in accepting all of Russia's claims, the system has undeniably altered the way militaries think about contested skies. By combining long-range interception, multi-target tracking, and the flexibility to counter both conventional and strategic threats, the S-400 positions itself as a central pillar of Russia's defense doctrine and a tool of global influence. At the heart of the S-400's appeal is its reported capacity to engage an extraordinary number of simultaneous targets. Russian sources claim that a single battalion can strike at least 10 threats at once, and a multi-battalion deployment can expand this to around 80. In scenarios where saturation attacks are increasingly common, whether from swarms of unmanned aerial vehicles, waves of cruise missiles, or ballistic salvos reinforced with decoys, this high-volume handling promises a level of resilience that most Western counterparts struggle to achieve. The capability, if accurate, reflects a doctrinal emphasis on resisting massed aerial assaults without excessive reliance on allied support or external networks. Range and missile diversity are also central to the S-400's design. Where Western systems like the Patriot Pack, 3 or Europe's SAMP T typically concentrate on specific classes of threats, the Russian platform is built to accommodate multiple interceptor types within a single structure. Operators can select from the short-range 9M96E missile, the extended-range 9M96E2, the 48N6DM for high-altitude engagements, and the strategic 40N6, which is claimed to engage targets at up to 400 kilometers and neutralize ballistic missiles launched from as far as 3,500 kilometers away. This mix allows the system to adjust its response in real time depending on the altitude, speed, and maneuverability of the incoming threat. Instead of fielding several batteries with different missiles, Russian forces can rely on one integrated system to meet diverse challenges, simplifying logistics and command coordination. Equally significant is the radar network that supports the S-400. The integration of the 91N6E acquisition radar and the 92N6 engagement radar provides a full 360-degree coverage area, contrasting with sector scanning radars used in some Western designs. This comprehensive view of the battle space allows for faster response and reduces blind spots that an adversary could exploit. Russia also highlights the system's ability to operate effectively in environments saturated with electronic warfare and jamming, where GPS and satellite-based navigation may be degraded or denied. By emphasizing survivability in such hostile conditions, the S-400 reflects a broader Russian focus on contested and degraded environments, where dependence on external infrastructure could prove to be a fatal vulnerability. Mobility further reinforces the S-400's appeal. Built on heavy trucks capable of traversing rough terrain, the system can redeploy quickly and be ready to launch within minutes. Western systems such as Aegis Ashore installations are fixed and require extensive infrastructure, while even the Patriot batteries need longer setup times and more logistical support. This mobility makes the S-400 particularly valuable in dynamic theaters, where rapid repositioning is key to avoiding detection and destruction. In practice, mobility adds not only flexibility but also survivability, ensuring that the system can remain a persistent threat to adversaries rather than a stationary target vulnerable to preemptive strikes. Beyond the technical dimension, the S-400 has already demonstrated its strategic impact. Its deployment within Russia and its sale to nations such as China, India, and Turkey has introduced new layers of complexity into regional security equations. For NATO, 
Turkey's acquisition of the system created rifts within the alliance, as the United States argued that integrating the S-400 alongside NATO's advanced aircraft could expose sensitive information. For countries like India, purchasing the system was as much about asserting strategic autonomy from Western suppliers as it was about filling a defensive gap. In each case, the S-400 served not only as an air defense asset but as a political statement about sovereignty and the ability to operate outside the shadow of Western defense structures. Whether the S-400's most ambitious claims hold up in real combat remains an open question. The system has not yet been tested against advanced Western aircraft or missile forces in a high-intensity war. Critics suggest that Russian promotional figures may exaggerate performance, noting that Moscow has historically emphasized deterrence by projecting superiority, even when real-world results are less clear. Yet even if the true capabilities fall short of official claims, the psychological and strategic effect remains profound. Adversaries must plan operations with the assumption that the S-400 can deny airspace far more effectively than older systems. This planning requirement increases the cost, complexity, and risk of operating in contested zones, which in itself serves Russia's strategic goals. In many ways, the S-400 illustrates two distinct philosophies of air defense. Western systems often distribute tasks across different platforms, relying on networked integration with allies to form a layered shield. Russia, by contrast, seeks to concentrate a wide range of functions into a single, self-sufficient system that can operate independently even if isolated. This approach reflects Moscow's long-standing emphasis on preparing for large-scale, high-intensity conflicts in which reliance on external support could be unreliable. The S-400's integration of long-range engagement, multi-target capacity, missile defense, and mobility represents a vision of autonomy and resilience rather than one of interdependence and specialization. The system also symbolizes how modern military technology extends beyond the battlefield into the realm of geopolitics. Nations that acquire the S-400 signal not only a desire for advanced defense capabilities but also a willingness to challenge the Western security architecture. For Russia, each sale expands influence, creates leverage, and complicates the strategic calculations of rivals. Even without being fired in anger, the S-400 exerts power simply by existing, shaping diplomatic relationships and military planning alike. As the arms race in air defense continues, the S-400 may be joined by successors such as the Russian S-500, which promises even greater reach and capabilities against emerging threats like hypersonic glide vehicles. Yet for now, the S-400 remains at the center of debates about the future of aerial warfare. Its blend of mobility, radar coverage, missile variety, and claimed interception ranges continues to fuel both admiration and skepticism. Regardless of where one falls on that spectrum, the system has already succeeded in redefining expectations and strategies across multiple regions. In conclusion, the S-400 is more than just a missile system. It is an expression of Russia's defense philosophy, a tool of diplomatic influence, and a challenge to Western dominance in the field of air and missile defense. Its advertised ability to engage dozens of targets at once, strike at vast distances, and endure in electronic warfare environments makes it one of the most complex systems currently in operation. Whether every detail of its performance matches the bold claims or not, the S-400 has already achieved one of the most important objectives of modern defense technology, forcing adversaries to adapt, hesitate, and prepare for the worst. In that sense, its impact is undeniable, reshaping the balance of power in the skies long before the first interceptor is launched.